Welcome, everybody. This is another episode of We Are M&R, and today I'm talking with somebody that a lot of you know, but uh, if you don't, it's uh, Lon Winters. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and let Lon go ahead and introduce yourself and your company and what you guys do. Uh, we've been working at this for about a little over 30 years. Um, I guess it's too late to be a doctor, so I guess I better get pretty good at this. Um, we've got a, a company, a brand uh, called Graphic Elephants. You may have seen or, or seen us around at some of the trade shows, and uh, we do a lot of branding and, and work with uh, Printware, which is now Graphics Pro. Been writing for them for I think about 25 years. Uh, a column that they publish that's that's transferring over to Graphics Pro. Uh, that's called Software to Substrate. Basically, I tell a story, um, and in a lot of ways. Uh, I think that I relate to other printers pretty well because uh, I'm not ashamed to, to uh, share a story of something we tripped over or screwed up or, or had terrible results and these are the things we've learned from it and it's kind of our approach to our, our business on the consulting side of things and that's sort of the, the graphic elephants thing is that we have a, uh, we call it a studio but it's more or less a screen print factory. Um, as well as we do uh, consulting in the field and, and training and educational types of things. And we think that both those things make us better at each of them. Um, because of my travels, we see a lot of different things and a lot take on a lot of different ideas. We learn as much from other printers as, as we teach. Uh, I'll be honest about that. And then our hands are in the ink on a daily basis. So it's not like we're uh, showing somebody a technique or, or recommending a, a, a solution without actually trying it ourselves and using it within our operations too. So it's a little bit of a unique and, and twisted business model. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I've known you for a couple of years now at least, uh, and you know we've crossed paths over the years, but uh, you know, let's just touch on it real quick because you know I, I like to kind of uh, cover just briefly what the last couple months have been like for people. Um, you wanna just touch on that real quick and then we can kind of get into some of some of these other things that you guys do but uh, why don't you why don't you let us know that you know um, like everybody we're we've studied what's happening online uh, through what MNR is doing and, and others uh, with you know how do we react to this uh, you know and there there was an initial shock phase um, and I think all of us went through it uh, uh, a the 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 health crisis itself, but then B, these shutdowns and, and uh, layoffs and, and the work drying up completely and um, those things, you know, they, they just smash in the face. And, and we spent, at least I've tried really hard to stay connected, not only to clients, but providers, manufacturers, um, our community uh, via quick little text, hey, you and your family safe, uh, emails, uh, uh, phone calls, uh, even the, all the, the Facebook Live and the videos uh, that you guys and others are doing um, just to stay connected. And that's as emotional probably as economical. Um, you know, and, and there's so much uh, cliche sayings with the, hey, we're all in this together, uh, this too shall pass. But I think those are real. And I think those are the things that kind of keep us uh, wrestling with it with a positive attitude. We're no different than a bunch of folks. We had to lay people off right away. Um, you know, some are furlough uh, as best we can. And that was scary for them, of course, uh, as well as, as for us. Um, and then the second round of, of furloughs, we furloughed a, one individual that we have had on board for probably almost 30 years. Um, but it's interesting how you have those conversations with everybody. The it's different than a layoff. It's different than a, than letting somebody go. It's diff things. Uh, your intent is to be different on the other end, which means there's opportunity um, to do things better, to do things differently. To we've got a, a laundry list of now. Like a lot of folks, we've—I swear—I've never worked so hard in my life for so little income or so little revenue, 
Um, but when we get a minute from applying for loan after loan and 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 uh, trying to figure out, uh, you know, who stays and who goes, do we have enough work to to continue, uh, you know, at least a skeleton staff? Do we work? And then the uh, the the cleanup mitigations and the disinfecting and the taking temperatures and what's our what's our process for bringing people in and out and 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 shutting down the the you know the the customers walking in and walking out and all of those kinds of things are you know they're overwhelming um, and I think many of us spend a lot of time awake at night trying to come up with ways or the best methods or the you know whatever we think is the uh, and I think knowing that there's other people to say, hey, what are you doing? How did you handle this? Um, and having that, and I think that's what maybe our industry is really good at. We, It is a fraternity or sorority, depending on how you look at it. It's a, it's a, uh, it, it's a pretty tight group. And even if you've never met somebody that reaches out and says, hey, give me a hand with, you know, for me, it's always, hey, what am I doing wrong on press? I can't get a really good wipe, what's the deal? Uh, to hey, what are you doing with your people? Uh, how did how did it work for you? Um, and 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 you know, I think the the crisis puts a a different spin on the human condition. Condition, and in our business in particular, it feels like everybody cares about each other, um, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think if there is a silver lining, and I mean, I hate to say that there would be a silver lining, something this awful, but you, you look at it and you go, the community, the the focus, the refocus on community versus, you know, uh, has been, it's been one area where I've been uh, really surprised greatly uh, in some ways as far as the response that people have given us in this, in the printing industry in different places and how welcoming and open people are and they want to work with people and and even people that you might say normally you put them in a room, their fists would be up, you know. And they're, 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 it's a different ad, it's a different mentality now. I've talked to a lot of people that that uh, it's been real gratifying in that sense. Um, sure. One thing I want to maybe this is a little bit of a switch of gears, but uh, one thing I want to talk about was some of the some of the stuff that you've done in the past, and and some of the stuff where you know I've worked with you as you know part of the M and R. Um, show team in different different arenas, you know, and different things, and and uh, you know, when you have a problem in your shop and you need to call the cavalry in, you're you're wearing the you're wearing the hat of the captain that's riding in a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? And I'm wondering how that's been for you in the past. You know, obviously, you know, this is a weird situation we're in now, but I can't help but think there's a lot of people that are going to be coming out of this thing right now and they're looking at their shop and they're saying yeah maybe that's how we used to do things but now we've had time to look at it and now we we actually want to do better now you know sure. what I mean and 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 what's it been like for you in the past and in in regards to getting called in like uh the cavalry coming over the hill you know and everything in, in our business whether it's uh the decoration piece of it or the uh on the consulting or advisory piece of it, our business, um, they're super similar in that it's, you know, you're, for lack of better terms, it's creative problem solving. Um, I, I, uh, I have a, a mathematics uh, degree and a, and a fine arts degree um, for no other reason other than, hey, I really liked art in college and I thought I wanted to be an engineer or something back then. Um, you know, I'd love to say that at this stage, it's, you know, the perfect, grain printing is the perfect marriage of the two. And it really is. It was completely unintentional on my part. Um, but it's really helped me kind of understand the, the, the balance in that. Now, you know, we, we both have, uh, grown up in this industry with, with mentors like, uh, Joe Clark and, uh, rest his soul and uh, Mark Coudre and Don Newman and some of the smartest people uh, in the industry for sure. Um, and at, at first, being really young, I bought into the it's an absolute science. And if you control every variable, then you know you control ABC, your results are D, E, and F. And I've learned in my seasoning that uh, okay, in theory that's true. Um, 
but our industry, another another mentor or, or older than me, we'll just put it that way, uh, Bill Hood says there's like a, a 18 bazillion variables in screen printing. You can't control every one of them, particularly on garments. We can control what we must, and I, and that's kind of how I approach the the client is, you know, let's control what we can and let's start out with one thing. Let's control this and then we'll try to control something else and then we'll try to control the next thing. And I think there's an embrace on the creative side that you can't let go as an educator or as a, uh, a trainer or consultant or whatever you want to call it. You, We're all in this business, a lot, many of us, most of us, because of the creative piece of it. It's fun. We like to draw or whatever it is. Um, that's the piece. And you have to be careful to balance that and not pull it out. What we like to kind of tell people is we're masters with bailing wire and duct tape. We can make anything work once. The problem is when we get a reorder, we have no idea how we made that work. So controlling what you can is kind of a requirement. And then then you can take the the art side of things and get really creative outside the norm. Um, what is it, uh, one of the sayings that we use in, a, in an Einstein piece we did years ago that goes on a lot of our materials, our banners and stuff is that knowledge is, more, or uh, imagination is more important than knowledge. And this is from Einstein. So and I think that applies to us, um, keeping in mind that we've got to wrap our arms around and control as much as possible, but never foregoing the imagination, the creativity. and I say it's the perfect balance of math and art. And our good friend, Michelle Moxley, I was having that conversation with her. She says, no, it's the space in between. So that's pretty deep, Michelle. <laughs> I'm gonna use yeah, that. Get deep. I, I, don't, I don't contest with her as far as depth, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, one, one thing I would say is, uh, is on a practical level on, you know, you know, a lot of, I think you're dead on with the theory and, and the, you know, and talking about the intersection there on a practical level, I've seen it enough times where people just, they just don't know what's wrong. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they're, they're doing the same things they were doing, but some, for some reason things aren't working. They call, they call you into the shop, you fix it and you leave. And then they're, you know what I mean? There's a noticeable difference in sure. before you showed up and then after people just are that there's more confidence and people are just they feel like okay we got this now and it's like a problem where people get stuck in their mm -hmm. either their routine or they just assume and I don't know how many times and you know I, I don't know how many times I've done this and and people just like they don't want to take out the magnifying glass or something you know what <laughs> I mean and and yeah. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Do, and and maybe you can just speak to that briefly, like the sure. outcome part of it. You know? we, uh, we travel with branded uh, ten power loops for that very reason, um, and, and it's it's amusing when you ask a screen man or a, a person on press or person screen person on press, um, you know, hey, where's your loop? Let's look at this a little closer. They look at each other like they don't have any idea. And this isn't everybody, but I, I bet it's 50%, um, maybe higher. Um, so we, we now they're not great loops, but we give away uh, at our the places we work with these loops so that somebody has something to look at. And, you know, it's a, it, and it's even bigger than that uh, in a way that nobody has any way of measuring anything. Um, and again, it's not everyone. There's 10% there's of the people that measure everything. Maybe that's stretching it. Five percent of the people measure everything, and and twenty five percent measure some, um, and there's probably fifty to sixty five percent that measure nothing. So the loop is certainly a way to identify at what point why my half tones aren't uh, transitioning properly on press, um, but so many things that don't cost that much to to give you some consistency or some uh, a way of, uh, my, my mother said this years ago, uh, what gets measured gets done. And if you can't measure it, you can't control it. And when we talk about controlling what you can or what you must, if, if you can't measure it, then there's no way to control any of it. And that, you know, it's, it goes back to, I always say garbage in, garbage out. But if you're 
if your film or your output CTS isn't opaque enough and you can't, I mean, you're not getting the, there's, or, you know, you're, you're not, your curve's not right on your output and you're, you're getting massive gain in your, in your midtones or all those kinds of things can be measured throughout. Now, and I'm not suggesting that everybody uh, go out and spend tens of thousands of dollars on measuring devices, but, you know, set aside a thousand bucks and start measuring some stuff. Um, and then that's what starts to get you to wrap your arms around it. And the 10 power loops, good ones are under $50. Um, medium ones are $10. So you can find and go to a trade show if we can ever get back to a trade show. Um, a lot of people are giving them away. So being able to see what you're looking at at a, at a, a much higher level 10 power uh, 10 times gives you an idea of what's going on. Are you really in register? Um, and I, you know, all of our eyes get a little rougher the older we get, and you can't hold the shirt far enough away from you to see what's going on. Um, so uh, my right-hand man's been with me uh, 25 years, Jason. Um, he just now is demanding a loop. He's always been able to see, and I'll get a loop out and say, look at that, it's out of registration by just a hair. Oh, it is not. I don't see that. Well, get a loop out. You can you can start to. So I finally won that argument, but it's taken a few you years. You to wait for him to get older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny when you, when you said that. Like there is a there's a maxim we use in marketing too, which is that which that which is measured gets managed. You know, and, sure. and it, it's it's along the same same exact lines. Like don't make decisions without data. And in a lot of cases, I think that's what's missing is they don't have the data they think they have yeah. in some cases, you know, and again, we're not picking on people. A lot of people do fantastic prints without actually getting that data. But then sure. when they have a problem, it's, it gets to that place where they're trying to diagnose it without the data. And I think that that, that is really where you come in. And, and, you know, sure. um, I think that one of the things that I would say, you know, um, is that overcoming obstacles, you know, you can look at it and you could say, every problem essentially, it's a problem when it's not examined, right? And then sure. when you define it and you actually force somebody, no, what is the real issue? And then you ask them again, yeah. oh, what is the real issue? And then you define it down and you, and you basically grind it down to a statement where you can make the statement. And that's something that I've seen you be really good at as far as going into a shop and, and kind of pushing for that. And I'm just, I'm curious as far as other roadblocks or obstacles. Now, maybe this this current one is so big that it's hard to think past it, but I'm just curious as far as roadblocks and obstacles and your kind of attitude towards that or how you've gotten past some of them. You know, I'll, I'll make a comment too about what you're saying. This is a big roadblock, so it's difficult to to look past it. But uh, I just did a, a blog thing with the Board of Decorators, uh, the Gildan deal. And we talked about uh, printing on black shirts and some methods and da 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 da. And while the the virus comes up because it's a part of our life, we can't pretend it doesn't exist. I can't tell you how much fun it was to talk about printing again instead of loans and and disinfectants and hand sanitizer and toilet paper. Um, so um, while it's a part of of what we are um, and where we're headed. Um, our process when we get it all back up and running um you'd be surprised or you you might not you probably won't be surprised um most people get the big stuff the, the another cliche the devil's in the details um like you said they you know that we're our what we do is a process and we're all again like another cliche we're only as strong as the weakest link with it within that process and what people struggle with sometimes is identifying where that weak link is. They, they think they're doing everything the way they've always done it. And now some results are different. Um, you know, one of the things that, that happens uh, a lot, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll spend time with, with a screen maker um, and they have what they think is a, a method. Um, we coat two over two uh, with our automatic coder. Um, okay, what's the speed? Well, I turned it way up because I can coat twice as many screens and they didn't realize they just decreased their stencil thickness by 
so thing and those that's a little thing within the whole process of screen making and um we kind of define our process sim quite simply um and it's maybe oversimplified but you let's say you design and develop uh the original art or you import or or scan or or get a digital file whatever it is you start with art we rip the art apart we, we separate it then we output to screen whether film or cts we color match or or choose inks we go to press and we set up and we run a test print and then we get approval and we run production. Now I'm oversimplifying production, but if you take those six or eight things and, and break them down, by definition, all of them but one is pre-press. But every one of them is equally important as a production piece of it. We don't generate revenue here. We only generate revenue here at the, at the production side. But if we take care of all these things at the highest level, when we get to press, then it starts to take care of itself and it increases our revenue on press, our money-making machine, as they say. Yeah, for sure. I think, well, one thing I think of when I think of you and your company is just, you got some stellar art. You guys have just, you've always impressed me, you know, whether I go into your booth at a show and just, um, you know, and just seeing the examples. And I think that that's such a big thing in our industry as far as, you know, and, and whether it's art, art that you've, you know, helped us with in the past, you know, that you've, you've provided for, for M&R's presses to help demonstrate our presses. You've done quite a bit of that, which we absolutely, you know, value highly. And then also, you know, I know you've worked with, with other, other companies and other distributors out there, but just seeing those examples and seeing them, um, you know, both in your booth and, and maybe you can just speak to that briefly as far as the sure. art process that you guys work with and helping people with that. Um, you know, I, think um, yeah, I, I appreciate the, the kudos. Um, thank you for that. But we, I would give all the credit to our team um, as far as development. Now that goes from the illustrator to the separator, to the screen maker, to the on-press component, to um, we've got, we have some of the best, most talented people that have, we've all been together for, gosh, the Jason 25, Corey 25, Ken 20, um, and we get each other. Um, we know what we're trying to accomplish and the communication is uh, uh, super uh, smooth and easy. Um, my illustrator doesn't pretend to know anything about the on-press component. And the on-press component doesn't pretend to know anything about the illustrator. And then you got the screen man that's got to execute what the separator has got in mind. So, and, and it, you know, the, I'm not going to lie, not everything goes on press seamlessly, particularly trade show art. You know we've set that up multiple times and made tweaks and changes and um, to when we're sending you guys stuff, we want to make sure it works and it looks maybe simpler than it really is. And it's, you know, dog and pony time for that type of thing. But um, the probably the best advice for, for other uh, printers is, is that communication. It, it's absolutely garbage in, garbage out. So art is king. You have to have good art. We, we mentioned this in some of the, our, our training sessions. It's like, uh, the garbage in piece of it is a bad composition is never going to look good on a t-shirt because it's a bad composition. Um, you know, it, it, and I know technically we're talking about a one by one 72 DPI GIF. Yeah, that's not going to work. But I think sometimes relating it to, you know, a, you know, a bad painting is not going to look good on a shirt because it's a bad painting. It's, you know, there's no contrast, there's no focal point. There's no, all of the things that, are kind of art driven or or art 101 basics are they apply to a t-shirt too i mean you gotta have a focal point gotta have contrast gotta you know all those kinds of things are as important if not more uh because the impact you're trying to do with a you know somebody walks up and sees a t-shirt oh wow that's that's great i love that t-shirt so it's the impact that has to hit them 10 feet away 20 feet away and those kinds of things different than a painting in an art museum where somebody goes oh my gosh did you get close to that and see all the detail above them? you know those it's it's different but it's very much the same yeah i 100 percent agree and then you know 
I could go down the rabbit hole with you as far as composition because I'm that's that's one of my that's one of my you know arenas you know as far as you know teaching life drawing and, and just drawing in general but but it is it's a fundamental thing in our industry that that is probably glossed over a lot you know is, sure. is composing things with with the thought to composition rather than just you know hey what's the highest detail I can get on this alligator skin bag that the person's <laughs> holding in the you know and just like you can get you get two granular too fast you know but uh, w one thing i would say and uh, before we wrap this up and i just want to be appreciative of your time is uh you consistently lon like when i come into your booth and this isn't blowing smoke at you either because i've trained i've done my fair share of, of seminars and stuff but now there's a certain word that people put in front of questions and some call them bad questions there's another word that's real common as far as you know and you seem to be having an incredibly high tolerance for what I might call <laughs> obvious questions. Okay. And I've, I've seen you field so many of those. And, and the reason I'm mentioning this is, I don't know if that's something that's just a personality trait or if it's something that you've cultivated, but it makes you, in, in, at least in my opinion, a really, really more highly effective trainer than a lot of trainers that lose their patience. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Like, because you've had to deal with so many different characters and personalities and from pirates to prisoners in this in this industry and, and <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying and and i'm just i just curious about that is that just something that you were born with or did you cultivate that you know it absolutely isn't something i was born with ask my wife um we've been married 30 years and um i was wound a little tight uh growing up and in our early years and let me put it to you this way she's a very patient woman um and i think i've learned a lot of patience over time and i don't i used to be one of those guys that snap um people hate working for people like that um i used to be a yeller i used to be a um it's been a long long time but but uh the, i had some I still have some personality flaws like we all do. Um, and I think it's a, it's something I'm aware of and I'm careful about it. And I still will get a little impatient here and there. Um, but I, it's something that I take a deep breath and go, okay, there are no stupid questions, only stupid people. I mean, there are no stupid questions. <laughs> no, it's, I, I think it's right. something that I've learned and cultivated and I'm, very aware of my own personality traits, so I'm careful about it. I try real hard not to let that. It's like Mike Tyson talking about how he hates that dude he used to be. <laughs> not quite like that, <laughs> but um, it is something I'm I'm aware of. And I appreciate yeah. you pointing it out because you do those things thinking you're trying to be a better person, and whether you are or you're not, you're like, mm, I don't know. Well, I think one of the things is too with that. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you think about it and you're like, well, it enables you to go into a shop and you can just, and you can work with people that other people maybe couldn't, you know, in that sense. Sure. And the, the other side of it is, you know, and then there's the extreme examples where basically nothing's going to work. You know, I, I, I can remember one, I think I even told you about it at the time at a trade show where um, a lady came up and, and she asked me, she said, what's that in the screen? And I said, oh uh you know that's the squeegee and then next to that there's the ink and that's you know the mash and all that and she goes well what is what is ink mm. Mm. <laughs> that actually stopped me for a second you know mm. how much time am i going to spend on this <laughs> i i do have a an antidote for you that might um uh Mark Coudre helped me with this years ago. He said, you know, and he says it's even more than this. I'll just stay with 50% of my job is psychology. He says it's way more than that. But I spent a week with a company in Texas. This is years ago now. And the production manager absolutely resisting me. And most of the time, you know, the owner's writing the check. So they say, hey, we need some help. Uh, here's your check. And it's substantial enough. Now we, you know, we think it saves them hundreds of thousands of dollars, so it's not that big a check in the grand scheme of things, but it's a good sized check. So the the owner writes the check, and and I'm spending the week with the people who do the work, 
Um, and the production manager has been doing this for 25 years, knows it all already. Um, and he makes that very clear the minute I shake hands with him. God, wouldn't it be nice to shake hands again? Um, and and I, I get resistance the entire week. So let me show you something. Let me show you something else. Let me show you something else. Let's work on this. Let's work on that. Let's get through the whole week. And, and I'm at the end of the week, I'm just like, I don't think I broke through this guy. I think, I mean, I... Hopefully this guy doesn't want to not pay me. Um, he calls me in the office to do kind of a wrap up. And I sit down and go, oh shit, he's going to chew my ass that we didn't learn a thing. And he says, wow, I'll tell you what, uh, Bob, we'll call him. Bob thinks the world of you and he learned so much this week. I think it's made just a massive amount of difference. I mean, and I swear it took every bit of the week to try to get him to even like me. Little, And I, and I use the word like, but it's more or less trust. You know, what makes you think that you know anything more about something than than I already do? And I always try to massage it and twist it into, let me give you a little bit different take. And then for lack of better terms, trick them into thinking it's his idea. You know, it's a, there's there's psychology involved in it and it's not just putting ink through screens on the shirts. So um, that was rewarding in a way. So it's, but it is, there's a lot of psychology involved in it and just getting yeah, the, now it. it it's definitely a big old part of what of, of consulting and helping people. But, uh, you know, I, again, I just want to I really want to thank you for your time and I appreciate it. And I do look forward to uh, seeing you at a trade show sometime soon and, and, and seeing you at M&R again. So so I really appreciate your time, Lon. And uh, how can people before we wrap up, how, how can people get in touch with you if they want to plan something they're starting up again, maybe and maybe, you know, it's when travel lifts a little bit and you can get out and about. Uh, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? You can reach me at lon, L-O-N, at graphicelephants.com. And then uh, just Google Graphic Elephants or my name, and you can find out more information on us. We've got some work to do on our website, which is one of those projects this week. But you can find a lot of information on us that way. All right. Thanks so much, Lon. Take care. Thank man. you. Stay safe.